I could feel heartbeats quicken and my own. They might lose the ability to speak or breathe or fall to the ground in shock. I soon mastered my craft, eliciting terror wherever I roamed. And not just in other kids, in anyone, the mailman, police officers, the dude driving the ice cream truck. After the first coronary, I decided to leave seniors alone. This was not a good way to make friends, and soon I had none. The voices, they were incessant. They reminded me I was not like the others. The feeling of belonging took root in me, belonging to the voices. I let them in. I listened. They didn't want me to get too close to anyone else. Sometimes I honestly craved true human companionship and contact, but the chatter would outlast these thoughts and feelings. The message I put out with my body was, don't touch me. Not because I was scared, because I was different. They went ahead and presumed I was scared, which was as good a cover as any for the truth. Fear was not and would never be my experience, only in the taking. I did feel cheated at times, waiting for something else to happen. I got tired of being different and alone, tired of being alone. I wanted something new and I told the voices, bring it, come on, take me, I dare you. Sometimes I wanted companionship. The other kids had friends. I became resentful, ornery. This ever-expanding dark world inside me was keeping me from real happiness. I wanted to be just another kid. The voices laughed at me. They reminded me of my great difference, my preternatural capabilities. I wanted them gone and I told them so. This was natural, they said. Being different was hard. They empathized with me. They advocated patience. I belonged to them and they belonged to me. Soon, very soon, I'd be with them, they said. I would be home. When adolescence arrived, I knew it was over. I was claimed. They told me I'd not bleed like the other girls, that I would not change like the other girls, none of which really mattered, for none of the mountain girls I knew ever became women in a pleasant, happy manner. In fact, quite the opposite full of lamentations and protestations, most of them, tears and ashamedness all around. What a drag. Ultimately, what mattered was trust. All what the voices told me came to pass. I remained strong and wiry and intense in a way that frightened many of the other kids away without scarring. Someone said I had the aurora borealis in my eyes. Some of the girls considered me lucky. They are all feeling awkward. They share consultations with one another and empathic moments, tearfulness and crying jags. I couldn't relate. Sometimes this made me sad. I would be further differentiated. I became alienated. I became other. The boys grew suspicious of me and the girls hated me more. They began to distance themselves from my unusual yet appealing nature, the strange light in my eyes. I cried alone at the top of many pine trees, overlooking the unforgiving, angular terrain. What was before soft and sweet now seemed rocky and harsh. The wind carried gossip down into the groves and tumbling out of mouths for everyone to believe. There was a meanness about humans to which I could not relate. An easy mistreatment of all sentient beings and me. My former friends now had fire in their eyes. My adopted parents never gave up on me. Despite my outlandish behavior, they loved me just the same. Nobody could convince them I was all bad. My stepmom said I came to her in a dream and could never be her nightmare. My stepdad said, Lightning bug! You're the apple of my eye. I love them so.